political empathy is the ability to detach your moral assessments of someone from your political disagreements with them. It's a dying art in this culture, and it's something I want to talk about right now by addressing its foundational element, which has nothing to do with intelligence or gathering a bunch of information or pursuing the right information. It's not about that. It's about being able to ask questions, being curious enough to ask questions, and not any old questions. It's about asking questions that challenge your pre-help beliefs. I'm going to be doing this more moving forward, where I'm not interested in putting forth my perspective. I'm just interested in asking questions from both a liberal and conservative framing and getting engagement from the audience, seeing where people are. I want this channel to be a place where people can commune from both sides. To try to take my own opinions out of it and to allow the audience to come and put forth the perspectives and then people can surf the comments and they can get a variety of perspective through the comments. Okay. At the very least, you won't be in an echo chamber in that sense. It's not perfect. The YouTube comments is a shit show. But I, I believe this is the only way to really push back against echo chambers. We need to make content in a way where both sides can commune and hash out controversial topics in the same space. Because it's not happening right now. I'll tell you, I'm in a lot of liberal circles. I'm in a very liberal urban area of the country. And there's anxiety regarding Project 2025. Oh, if the conservative party gains power, the conservative party, I sound like I'm a, I'm a Brit. If the Republicans gain power, they're going to implement all of these horrid Project 2025 plans. And I'll tell you, there's no way that any of the people in my social circles have actually read 900 pages of Project 2025. Nobody's done that. They've probably read articles that are alluding to certain sections of the document and trying to highlight and summarize what's going on. But w within those articles, there's going to be a very clear slant. And there's not going to be an understanding of what is the thought process behind the proposals? What are they looking to accomplish? What are the values that they're trying to uphold? Because the people who are proposing ideas within Project 2025, spoiler alert, liberals, these are not shitty people. These are not inhumane individuals who want to destroy America. These are people with a different set of priorities, a different set of moral foundations upon which they derive their commitments. I think something that's very important to remember is that when we expose ourselves to both sides of an argument, certain information is going to stick, certain information won't. I wish I could sit up here and perfectly describe everything that I've learned from Thomas Sowell over the years, or perfectly describe everything that I've listened to Terence McKenna say. Two very different figures, but these are both people I deeply respect. What I think we have to remember is that you won't be able to keep the, the words and the, the knowledge. You won't be able to keep that. But you'll be able to keep that feeling of, ah, this person has a viewpoint that's worth listening to. This person has a viewpoint that's worth listening to. If more people can ask questions that challenge themselves to reconsider topics, we're going to live in a much more empathetic society. We're going to live in a much more politically empathetic society. I'll see you in the next video.